Hello, I'm your host, Leonard Duncan. Welcome to a new episode of ATV Talk and Motorsports Podcast. Please join us every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We bring you interviews with industry professionals, live events, live news about the motorsports industry in every episode. Enjoy the show. Whether we are out riding with our friends and family or racing in extreme environments, we all need good tires. That's why I recommend GBC Power Sports Tires, a division of Green Ball Corp. Their products, which include XC Master, Mini Master, and Ground Buster 3, are what leading professionals in the ATV UTV industry are using. You can get your tires at greenballtires.com or find them on Instagram as GBC Tires for further inquiries. Are you looking for the best suspension technology for your sport ATV? Look no further than Elka Suspension, the industry leader in sport ATV suspension technology. With championship wins in prestigious events such as the Dakar Rally, SCORE, Best in the Desert, ATV MX, Cross Country, and Works, Elka Suspension has established itself as the go-to choice for athletes and enthusiasts alike. But they don't just stop at ATVs. They're constantly expanding into new markets, including UTVs, trucks, SUVs, pit bikes, snowmobiles, and more. Their commitment to innovation and quality means they're always looking to improve and adapt so you can enjoy a smooth ride wherever you go. Want to learn more about what Elka Suspension can do for you? Visit their website at elkasuspension.com or give them a call at 450-655-4855. They will always be happy to answer your questions and help you find the perfect suspension solution for your needs. Welcome to DBR Racing Products, the leader in 3D modeling and innovations. Since 2015, they have been revolutionizing the industry, starting with their groundbreaking YFZ450R battery boxes. But they didn't stop there. They have continued to push the boundaries constantly improving their design with each new version. In 2018, they introduced the game-changing Vortex EXO cage, specifically designed to securely hold the Vortex ECU in a safe and sturdy location. This breakthrough innovation ensures your ECU stays protected even in the toughest racing conditions. At DBR, they understand that every detail matters. That's why they also offer an array of essential products to enhance your racing experience. Their spark plug hold downs keep your engine firing at peak performance while their LTR breather boxes ensure optimal ventilation for your machine. Their LT250 engine skid plates are a must have for those seeking unmatched protection. Engineered to shield your engine from impacts and rough terrain. They provide the ultimate defense for your ATV. But that's not all. They've developed ProPeg mounts that allow you to use TRX 450R Nerf bars, giving you greater control and maneuverability on the track. To explore their full range of innovative products and learn more about DBR Racing, visit their website at www.dbratv.com. You can also reach them directly at 507-828-1233. Their knowledgeable team is ready to assist you with any questions or inquiries. DBR Racing Products, where innovation meets performance, unleash the power within you. Chloe Harper, welcome to ATV Talk. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing amazing. Hey, thank you so much for uh, sitting down and, and giving me some of your time. Oh, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're making quite the statement back there in the WXC. Uh, what's going on? Um, just, I guess, trying my hardest. Uh, really coming to this year, I didn't think I was going to do as well as I am. Uh, I am the rookie of the class uh, coming off of, well, coming out of the women's amateur class from last year and just 
first race was pretty much just a base for me and I got fourth. And so to me, I guess I'm doing pretty solid for the first year. So, yeah. And you're having a good time. Oh yeah. Always. <laughs> always. Um, you know what? I want to go backwards in time a little bit, if you don't mind. Yeah, of course. How did you get into riding ATVs? Well, so my dad and my mom, uh, they had nothing to do with it. My dad's best friend actually got us into it. He raced when I was younger. I started racing when I was three and he convinced my mom and my dad for Christmas to buy us Honda nineties and took us to our first race. And we have, well, I have been doing it ever since. When you say we. I have an older brother. Uh, he used to race. And then uh, sadly, a couple years ago, my brother got Lyme's disease. And it took him from racing all the time to recovering and healing from that. So uh, he actually, in two years, this weekend at the Fast Tracks team race, uh, he rode a 250R and uh, raced for the first time. So, and that recovery is still ongoing. Uh, yes, it, he has his good days and he has his bad days. It just depends. Uh, Lyme's disease just impacts diff- uh, everybody different. Right, right. I I've heard some things, but I didn't know anything about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, Adam McGill has, I believe, Lyme's to me, Lyme's disease also. Yes. Uh. I, the way it impact, impacts my brother, uh, he gets sleepy really easy. He gets sick really easy. And then the way it impacts Adam and impacts him like uh, overworking and different types of food and things like that. So it's just different for everybody. Right. Right. I understand that. Wow. That's, that's crazy stuff. And you have continued racing. Did you guys always race cross country or was it motocross or was it, is it just um, been cross country stuff? Actually, I didn't start racing like cross country until um, about when I was 15. Uh, I've only been racing GNCC for about four years. Before that, we did uh, a couple local races here and there. I did motocross every once in a while. And then um, I raced like Wexer and uh, it was called MOBHS before. uh, They are not a series anymore, but it's where I started. It was a woods kind of GP track, and then uh, Wexer is a woods track. But I never, I was just a GNCC person at the local ones, like uh, the Penton, and we always went to Ironman every year. Oh, nice. So you had some exposure to it, just not at the level you are now. Yes. So how did you develop into racing it all the time? Um, so I started racing GNCC in 2020. It, we, it started off good. Adam McGill actually talked us into it because we didn't know if we wanted to or not. And my dad's work schedule was kind of here and there and just depends. So we set our goal for 2020 to be our first year. And ever since then, uh, I have been racing GNCC since then I started on the 150, and then after that, I moved to Women's Amateur for two years on a 450, and then now I'm in Women's Pro. And you're 19 years old? Yes, I just had a birthday on Saturday. Graduated high school, going to college? Um, No, I graduated high school uh, with six degrees. I am a licensed dental assistant. I have my x-ray tech license for dental assisting. Um, And then I also have a couple other certifications and degrees in dental assisting as well. And you, you you said you graduated all that with in high school? Yes, sir. I went to a career and technology center about 30 minutes from my house. Whoa, that's awesome. I love to hear it when younger people are motivated and it sounds to me like you're motivated. Yeah, I wanted, I knew I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grow, I wanted to be when I grew up, but I knew I always wanted to help people. So uh, I had braces a lot when I was younger and I wanted to make someone feel better about their smile as my orthodontist made me feel about mine. So hopefully here in a few years, I will go on to college and get my uh, dentist degree and license and then become an orthodontist one day. 
Wow, that's freaking awesome that you have a plan like that. So keep 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 going. Do you think that you'll race during your college, or do you think that you'll give it a break? Or, I mean, how do you think that's going to work out for you? I'm going to race as long as I can. Um, my whole perspective and my family's perspective is you only get one opportunity to race and college will always be there. You can always pay to go to school later. So for me, I'm going to race and give it all I got while I can. And if I am 50 years old going to college, then I'm 50 years old going to college. Tracy Pickens has made quite the career out of racing ATVs and she's has a huge fan following and she does speak very highly of you, which in our initial call, I was telling you that. So, well, let me put it to you this way. She speaks very highly of all the young ladies that race and feels that she's, um, I hope this is the right word, mentoring all of you. Yes, of course. Uh, I met Tracy when I was, I believe, seven or eight, and I have uh, a few jerseys with her autographs on it when she was Tracy Checo, um, and I've looked up to her the whole time I've been racing, and to me, I think it's an honor being able to race against her now that I'm in the pro class because I get to race against someone that I have dreamed to talk about and see and just be a part of their racing program and my racing program. So to me, I think it's pretty cool that I get to race against her because she is, she has more GNCC and national titles than I think anybody. And yeah, she is the most decorated champion they have. I mean, in a 2019, the accomplishment she had, she got because she was the rider of, um, you'll have to correct me because I may say this wrong. Uh, she was the AMA rider of the year and she was also the GNCC Rider of the Year. I believe they're two separate awards. And A, a lady winning it is awesome. A, an ATV racer winning it is even more awesome. Yes. Uh, I believe that she doesn't get enough credit. They talk about all the championships. Bill Balance has won and Chris Borage and Walker Fowler. And I feel like she doesn't get enough credit for putting her time and her effort in because she was one of the reasons why the WXC class was made. And like she raced against all men and had championships and let alone all her women's championships as well. I agree. I agree. I think, I think that when it's warranted and in this case with the class that you ladies have the, the, the depth of your field, it's definitely warranted to have, um, more accolades and more credit given. Um, unfortunately, the world we live in is the world we live in. I can't, I can't change some of that. Uh, they had the, they started the works pro class. I was involved a little bit with talking to the ladies about that. Um, also with the help from Andrea Berger from the uh, ATV MX series, she got involved and uh, helped talk to Tori Matisic and a couple of the other gals on the West coast and, uh, now they have a pro class on the West Coast. Yeah, I have met, uh, I think her name's Lainey Fryer. Yes. I've met her before. Cause she has actually come over and her and her family has come over. Um, and I've met them a couple of times and they seem like very wonderful people. And they talk very highly about the work series and how much it has progressed and gotten better over the years. That's pretty awesome. I, I got to race the very first works race ever. Oh, Wow. Yeah, I'm old. It's okay. No, no. I, I know. I know. It, it's okay. But yeah, we we got the original owner of the series uh, called us, called up my brother, Duncan Racing, and asked if we would participate, you know, if there was any, you know, uh, reason to have quads race and, you know, so on and so forth. So myself and Doug Eichner and um, uh, Tavis Kane, went to the very first race and um had a good time That's tavis good. won the pro class and i won the amateur class and and uh, from there we started tri doug eichner and i started traveling the series in 2002 and um my last time at a works race was january um 2022 oh, wow when did you yeah. stop coming to GNCCs or uh, coming to less and less? Um, 
I never came to a lot of GNCC races because we we traveled the uh, motocross series with numerous different riders up until 97. And we would spottingly hit the cross country races. I the I can't even remember exactly the last time that it was 2000. It was after 2007. At some point I went to uh, was my last GNCC race that mm -hmm. I went to. Um, and I did that for a company called GPR steering stabilizers. And up until that, the, the very first one I ever got to go with was uh, the Blackwater 100 with Bob Sloan. Oh, wow. Yeah. Some history there, huh? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, now, that was... Go ahead. There's been women that has ran the Blackwater 100, actually. I, I knew just, that. I just found that one out at the Mountaineer. Yeah, I, I have that. no idea. Yeah, that, that race is... It's still epic. I wish they still had it because it was amazing for the sport. But isn't... Um, Gosh, why am I drawing a blank? The one you guys just had right before summer break? Snowshoe. Yeah. The snowshoe is becoming an iconic race along with Ironman. And more and more people come out for those races and spend some time. And you're getting international acclaim for those events. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, snowshoe is big. Well, one, because of Adam. And two, it is on top of this big mountain resort and everybody wants to come out and watch all these pros and all these people just come out and try their hardest because snowshoe is supposed to be one of the hardest tracks out of the year. I personally, I love the tracks everybody else hates because to me, it's it's more my element. Uh, I rode at Adam's dad's house. If you've never been there, it is rocky. It is rough. I rode there for a for a while actually before uh i actually raced i guess comp i call it competitively but it was before i actually won my championship in women's amateur i rode there a lot and to me mountaineer and snowshoe are my two favorite tracks because they're raw they're rocky and they're rough and they they show what kind of a rider everybody else is really really the rougher it is the better huh oh yeah i love it how what do you think of the right in the in the rain and the muck i like it um honestly <laughs> i am i i am just happy i get to race uh, i don't care if it's rainy i don't care if it's dusty i'm going to try my hardest everywhere that's awesome how much riding do you get to do when you're not racing i try to ride at least once if not twice a week if i don't get to i still go to the gym and i still work out but I race anywhere between one to two times a weekend, if not more. Uh, just uh, yesterday and Saturday, I raced a two-hour race on Saturday. And then I raced a two-hour team race on Sunday. I did a team race with a little girl that was an hour long. And then I did another two-hour team race with Jessica Elioff yesterday. So you and Jessica are, are buddies? Yes. I I think I'm actually kind of friends with almost all the women's pro. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Jessica's having quite the year, isn't she? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I am, I would have to say that I'm very happy with where my season has went so far in the WXC class, let alone all the other pro graphics writers uh, in the season as well. You're currently fourth in points or? Yes, sir. Do you have a chance to make it to third? Uh, I have a chance as long as I beat the girl who's in third by two places or I win and she doesn't get on the podium. That's Caitlin. Uh, I believe so. Yes. Yeah, because Hannah and uh, Jessica are fighting it out still for the for the lead, Jessica had a little, Hannah had an issue with a spindle. I'm assuming uh, that's what I was told at the last race and uh, Elioff uh, won. So that, uh, that helped her quite a bit, but still with two rounds to go, anything can happen. Oh yeah, definitely. It's anybody's race. It, anything can happen to anybody, honestly. It's, 
you, you got to focus on one race at a time. You can't focus on two races or three races down the road. You got to focus on the race that weekend and forget about everything else. Exactly. Can't you can't go into points race. You can't go into points racing while you're racing. You need to just race, do your thing and 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 make it work out. Yes, definitely. Do you ride any other forms? Uh, do you ride motorcycles, anything like that? Or is it all ATVs? So, and you might find this funny. I e-bike all of the tracks. If I don't fall within the first 10 feet of me biking the track, it's a good day. So two wheels is not my forte. Uh, I have a pit bike, but um, I get hurt every time I ride it. So it just stays parked. <laughs> Even when you ride it in the pits? Yes, I actually don't pit ride because I get hurt all the time. Um, I crashed a snowshoe and I fractured my collarbone and I had a two week off break and I come back to a local, I hit a tree and I tore, I think three or four ligaments in my wrist. Wow. That's, that's not a good thing. That's not a good thing at all, man. <laughs> Did you do you, you fell off after the race on the pit bike, right? I wrecked during the race. No, I mean for snowshoe. Oh no, I that was during the race. I uh my handlebar where the clamps go that clamp your handlebars to your steering stem, the bolts like sheared off or snapped in half. And only one half of my handlebars was attached and I didn't know it. And I was um, coming up the logging road after the nine mile marker and it didn't turn when I needed it to turn and it hit the tree right there. And it flung me and my shoulder into the tree and it fractured uh, my collarbone. Ouch. And, and I had to ride it uh, from the nine to the one back to my parents and then go see the mountain doctors. And got all patched up and uh, put me in a sling and they gave me some ibuprofen and told me to rest and go see the doctor on Monday. And did you? Yes, I went and saw the doctor. Uh, she said that I had a displaced fracture. Uh, it's like right, right here in your uh, collarbone that I just needed to take a couple weeks off and it would heal. I come back and she told me it was healing great. And then, um, I come back on that Monday, I raced that Saturday and I had to make another appointment that Monday for another x-ray. <laughs> Has the doctor said anything about you racing? Uh, she says that we should keep her on speed dial and that, uh, we need to keep a regular weekly appointment booked in the doctor's office. <laughs> No, that's a bad idea. You don't want her on speed dial. And you don't want a regular appointment. You oh, know, well, I I've have to go to her. I've seen her so much over the years. She's just used to it when she sees my name pop up on the schedule. She already knew. Yeah. Uh, she's been, she's looked at my shoulders, my knees and my ankles. So she has, she's seen pretty much. And you're just 19 years old and you've already done all that. Yes. Uh, I have display. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I have displacement of my kneecaps, which means they dislocate really easy and they're like, they're not centered, they're offline. And so they, they walk weird and it, it, it looks kind of funny. If you've never seen me walk before, I like walk, it looks pigeon toed, but it's not, it's like off centered just a little bit. And okay. so it's, it's just something that I've done when I crash at races. So now I have special knee braces I wear when I race and knee pads and things like that. So everything is everything that I've done while I've raced. I have had special uh, knee pads and braces made for me. And honestly, I have gotten more hurt playing school sports than I have racing. Well, that's most people, you know, uh, I freaking crashed on my mountain bike so many times. And all the scar, all the scars I have on my face are from my mountain bike, not from racing ATVs or motorcycles. It's all from that. The, the shoulder injury, the permanent shoulder injury I have, is it was started from ATV racing, but the reason it's permanent is because I didn't go to the doctor. So go to the doctor, 
when the doctor tells you not to race, don't race. And when they tell you you have a broken bone, listen to them. <laughs> Just highlights. I didn't listen and didn't go to the doctor. So I I go to uh, actually I go weekly to a physical therapist and chiropractor. Um, I do PT to help my muscles and everything strengthen. And he is also a chiropractor. We travel almost two hours to go see him weekly. And he helps me uh, before my races and after my races. So I, I do take great care of my body uh, before and after races to make sure that I'm ready to go racing and prepare my, my body for the toll it's about to take for the next two hours. Which is great because... You know, you look at the professional athletes in football and baseball, you know, and hockey and all the in basketball, they have trainers that are, you know, massaging them and taking care of them and looking after them. So so elevating your game for your sport down the road, because there is a life after racing, you know, if it's 45 years old, there's still life after racing and you want to be prepared for that and make sure that you have quality of life yeah uh my dad tells me there's life after racing but right now I'm. it's kind of hard to believe sometimes because you're thinking this is what I'm doing right now this is what I'm gonna do forever and then you get older and you got to figure out what you want to do after I never thought I'd stop going to the races and I may still I, I want ATV talk to go mobile, which that's totally different than being a, a race mechanic and, and working on machines at the racetrack. I never thought I would stop that. And for the, at the, in the beginning, it was really, really awkward and tough. And um, race weekends were um, an emotional turmoil inside, but now sometimes I don't even realize it's race weekend because I've filled it with, you know, this, you're going to laugh at this home husband projects that, you know, for the last 35 years, I never did. I get that. We, I race every weekend. Um, I have raced every weekend since the first national and I've raced twice before the first national. I think I added it up. It was like 20 some weekends out of the year I've raced so far already. And some of those were Saturday and Sunday. So I race every weekend. I try to at least, uh, to me, uh, the only way to improve is just to keep riding, keep racing and just keep, keep moving forward in my physical fitness and my program. I pity, I pity your mechanic. Poor, my dad. Yeah. Your poor dad's freaking working himself, his regular job and taking care of your bikes. My dad works on all my Hondas. So. Nice. Nice. What year? Um, we have, we have between, well, there's a lot of them. We have between 05 and 2014, we have all the ranges and we have seven that are just set up for me to pick and choose where I want to race. I have one that is my backup national bike. And then, um, all the other ones are for locals and things like that. Which year configuration do you like to ride the best? Oh, I ha I I don't my favorite one out of them all is my national bike. And I think it's a 14. Uh well, it was my national bike. Uh it's a backup now. Uh I believe it's a 14. And we have fought for I, I believe two years to figure out what I initially like and things like that. So it's been a it's been a whole team effort from uh, Lone Star helping us out and Custom Axis and Micah helping us figure out my shocks and what I like and my dad helping me tune everything in and then Adam also helping me figure out what configuration that I like too so nice so this is going to be a tough question for you you know that after 10 years Honda no longer has to support that model yes I yes I we have uh we won't run out of parts. I can say that. <laughs> well, if you race long enough, you will. Um, I know it's going to be a sore subject for some people to look at that know me and they know my family and they've seen 
uh, my garage and my things like that. But I actually at round 10 for the nationals. Yeah. Round 10. I raced a Yamaha. Um, I have one, I have two Yamahas. One is sitting on the shelf and then another one is my other one that I raced at Mountaineer is at Matt Pierce's being worked on because I broke a swing arm. My dad does not work on a Yamaha. He, uh, he has come, he says, we'll let the professionals take care of it. <laughs> so, so which do you prefer? I can ride both. I can ride almost anything you put me on. Uh, I have only rode the Yamaha about five times and uh, the Mountaineer would be that fifth time. Um, I can ride anything as long as it has four wheels, I can ride it. <laughs> I love the confidence, but you still didn't answer my question. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I would have to say that I'm faster on the Yamaha, in my own opinion. I do feel faster on it, but there's just a the comfort of my Honda that I have. So you like the way the Honda handles, but the Yamaha seems to get you around the track quicker? Uh, Yes, I have... I rode it in the woods twice now and I've taken the feel like the lapse times and how I felt. I don't really feel like I get as tired on the Yamaha as I do the Honda, but I did just race a Honda for seven hours this weekend. So um, I still feel comfortable on the Honda and I feel comfortable on the Yamaha. So whatever is put in front of me, I will ride because I have had the opportunity to ride both. Because even though I have the opportunity to ride the Yamaha, I still have my national bike that I rode and won on in the trailer. If I feel off, I will ride my Honda because I still feel confident, comfortable on it. Okay, that's 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 a fair assessment. So there is the possibility of you going to Yamaha if the need arises. Yes. Um one of my sponsors has opened up a door and given me the opportunity to ride a Yamaha. And I took the opportunity because you only get, you only get an opportunity once in your lifetime. And if you don't take the opportunity when it's given to you, you could lose the opportunity or it could be handed to somebody else. So I took the opportunity and um, I ride a Yamaha, but I still, ride my hondas and if i have to practice i practice on honda if i have to race a local i race on all my hondas it's only at a national where i race the yamaha okay that's that's fair enough you know and if it's sponsors helping you gotta you gotta nurture those sponsor relationships because that ultimately what you want is a sponsored ride so there's less money coming out of your pocket to go do what you love yes of course um it just, to me, I have had so many opportunities come to me in the last year. I don't think many people thought that I would be doing as well as I have this year. And with my statistics and my race, like just the stats of the year has opened doors and for people to look at me and say, hey, uh, have you seen the rookie? Have you seen her? She's trying her hardest. They're like only people who look from the outside and they see me on Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays racing, but they don't see the effort put in from Monday through Friday. Yeah. But if the results on Saturday are good, then they know that you're working hard on, you know, Monday through Friday or Sunday through Friday, depending on, you yeah. know, it, 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 effort dictates a result and if your results are there you obviously weren't intimidated when you moved into the pro class I was nervous I was very very nervous it didn't I don't think people thought I would be nervous but I was scared um I heard so many things that these women would do and if you got in their way and I was like okay I'm nervous because I come from a race where I had to race against maybe one, one or maybe one through four people that would, would be the same speed or faster than me. 
to 15 to 20 women that are the same speed to as faster as me. So to me, I had to adjust to their speed to get faster because let's be honest, I was, I am the rookie of the year in that class and coming off a championship, I was nervous thinking like, oh, I'm not going to do as well. And I'm going to go into this year. I just, I wanted to go into the year, seeing how I would do to see if I could honestly compete with these, these women that have been in the class for more, multiple more years than I have. Yeah. Jessica, this is her third year. Yeah. She come off a, she actually has a championship and a women's amateur as well. So she is doing amazing. And isn't it, isn't it Hannah's fourth year? Uh, no, I believe it's her fifth or sixth year. She has three championships. Her first year, um, her first year, she won a race. I think it was, I'm not, don't quote me on this because I'm not sure, but it was one of the last four rounds she won. And then uh, the next year she won her championship in I believe nine or 10 rounds. I'm not sure. I was stumped on that myself because I only calculated two. And then I, and Tracy actually corrected me. She goes, no, she's a three-time champion. Yeah, she oh. is. Her first year, uh, it was, I believe it was either 2019 or 2020 when she won her first championship. Uh, yeah, it was 2019. Uh, she won within nine or 10 rounds she won it honestly very very early in the year wow that's that's putting down quite the season i'm gonna have to go look at some of those results because mm -hmm. uh, i did i don't look back that often um it's just there's so much going on you know with there's two different desert series there's the tt series which i try to keep up on even though i don't get many uh return people coming on the show you have works, you have GNCC, you have ATV MX, you know, uh, then, you know, there's score and we're a motorsports podcast. So I'm looking at a lot of motorcycle stuff, F1, MotoGP, you know, I'm always checking some form of motorsports. So to, so to go back and check stuff like that, it, it's, it's just like for the show. One of the things that I told you on our first conversation is I don't want to pre-script. I want it raw because people will be more endeared to you because it's raw versus some question that I sent you that you're boxing out. I rode the race. You, know, you understand what I'm getting at there? Yes, sir. Well, because I can't pre-script anything. If I pre-script, it, it, it's all notchy and horrible. And, and, by no means am I a professional. This is don't, <laughs> don't even go there. I build ATVs for a living. I do this for fun. I, you know what? I do this because I want people to hear your story. Well, yeah. honestly, well, not very many people. People are more focused on the dirt bike side. Not very many people come over to the quad side and see how we're doing as well. So, trust me, I've lived it my whole life because I've been involved in ATVs. Uh, you know, I remember uh, we used to travel the Mickey Thompson series and every race they would send the ATVs off to clean the mud. Every race. Y you know what? I take that back. There was one race we were somewhere and it, it was so long ago and, and it was so rare. We didn't go out first. They sent the uh, like the 1600 cars out and one other class out before us to clean the mud off. And those guys were bitching and complaining. And I said to one of them, because we had knew who they are, I says, why are you complaining? We're the ones that have been cleaning the mud off of the track for you for the last five years. So why are you complaining? And he looked at me kind of funny, smiled, and says, have a good day. <laughs> you know, so it's perspective, you know, when, when somebody – finally brings it to your attention i like i like watch the the bike side too the xc1 pro class dude, eight rounds before they had a a multiple class winner that's what makes it interesting 
oh when was the last i can't remember the last time you had more than three winners in the pro class in an xc1 atv side yeah because it's been you had three this year yeah yeah because one was adam and bryce and neil and then on a heart. heart yeah and and it, yeah so you've had three different winners uh, and that was amazing and it keeps people interested plus hunter hart led the points for for a round and adam mcgill was only i think a win and a podium out of the championship after he won penton yes i mean i don't know what happened to him I lost a chain at uh, Snowshoe. If he wouldn't have lost that chain and finished better, the points would be a little shaken up. And, and he, you know, he was on a roll. Unfortunately, I don't know what happened to him uh, the last round. Uh, he got seven. One of the problems is I can get him to answer a text message occasionally. He is he is crazy busy. I I. I believe it because he is crazy busy all the time, every day, all day long. I get it because I'm, I have three jobs. So I do this, I build stuff on the side. When I'm not at Duncan Racing doing my regular job. And, and yeah, and my wife is, um, God love her. She has me uh, doing. Yes, you home. keep it. She's busy. She keeps you busy. You, you know why? My wife works harder i think she worked harder than i do she is an amazing woman strong fierce at what she does and uh, she just loves people her heart's so big she's in the medical field and um takes care of people that are uh transitioning if you understand what i mean by that i completely understand and she is touched by every human she comes in contact with and to me, that's so special. You know, this isn't about my wife. This is about you. But uh, as you can tell, I'm very um, fascinated by what an amazing human she is. And and uh, very, very blessed to have found uh, the, her. It just I just wish it wouldn't have taken 49 years. You know, I wish I would have found her when I was young. But that's neither here nor there. Um, what do you see on the schedule for you long term? Um, long term, hopefully a couple championships. Um, I would love to win a championship in the WXC class and just hopefully being able to make this my job. I would love to make racing a full-time thing. I want to make it my job for a, until I can't make it my job anymore. I want to be able to travel with my sponsors and promote them and promote myself and brand myself to progress it to continue to not not only make money but to impact another person's life to have them want to make racing their job as well that's that's pretty incredible stuff for someone so young where did where did that come from as far as okay let me rephrase the question understanding that your sponsors need to be taken care of where does that come from Adam McGill. Really? Elaborate for me. I have grown up with Adam McGill since I was six. He lives 30 minutes from me. I have rode with him. He has trained me. He is one of the biggest reasons why I won my championship last year because he pushed me to do things I didn't want to do. He pushed me to ride twice a week. He pushed me to the gym. He, he is one of the reasons why I am in physical condition um, I went through a big weight loss journey. Um, my first two years of racing GNCCs, I lost, I believe like 60 some pounds just to be able to get in physical condition to race and be competitive because a overweight eating fat cakes, laying on the couch, doing nothing kind of girl is not going to win a championship, a physically conditioned athletic and trainable person is going to win a championship to be able to grow and progress with their body as their speed and their progression, their progression on the track is going to grow as well. He so, should. So is he's teaching you about diet, 
and exercise yes as well as training yes yes of course he is he has showed me how to speak clearly and pronunciate my words he has showed me how to walk up to a person and hold a conversation he has showed me how to be this fun person that anybody can walk up to and hold a conversation with and make make them happy that they come up and talk to me he has showed me how to be approachable for kids to want to come talk to me and me to sign and autograph stuff for them he has taught me not only racing and quad on the quad side but he showed me how to grow as an adult that is outstanding to hear because one of my biggest complaints in this industry is the lack of support for sponsors you know beings that i come from both sides of it a racer and a sponsor i understand that racers need help but when a sponsor gives you product z they're taking money out of their pocket and giving it to you yeah exactly and for every free product that you receive from your sponsor you have to sell two or three of them to even get them their money back see i see on my mom's graphics business she gives a pro a graphics kit well they have to sell two for her to break even and just make a little bit of money. Right. So to make up for the complete loss of revenue, it takes 10. It's it's just crazy. For the, not not for her to sell 10 for that professional individual to sell 10 units at retail price. And so if graphic kits are 200 bucks a piece, they need to go to to 10 different people to not the buddy deal. Hey, you're my buddy. You know, I'll get you one at a discount. No, you pay retail. And people come to me. If you look at my quads, they are the most gorgeous thing you ever see. Some of them are all black with these beautiful colored graphics. I have a all black quad with this. It's almost like it's 3D cubic rainbow. Just it's gorgeous. People want my graphics kit, but they don't want to pay for it because it might cost such and such price for my mom to make it. But for her just to make that money back, she has to add or double that to make money on it. And business, she's not in business to give product away. She's in business to make money. Exactly. And she bought pro graphics for me and my brother when we raced and now I get cool graphics kits all the time and all these riders that my mom's like all the pro riders they have helped grow my mom's business and Adam has helped my grow my mom's business more than she could ever imagine she went from doing a hundred kits a year to five to seven hundred kits a year and it's nuts Adam has Adam has done amazing things for my family. It's crazy. That's outstanding to hear. He, uh, I've never met Adam face to face. I've only talked to him on the phone and a few text messages. And um, I wish I could have taped the phone conversation we had because I think we talked mostly 250Rs. Oh, yeah. He knows if, if it's about a 250R, he will sit there and talk to you about it for hours. It doesn't matter. He'll talk to you about the little T that connects the hoses for hours i get it i mean you you have to have a passion for it and if you don't you shouldn't you shouldn't do it and there's there's young people like yourself you know what a 250r is but there's so many people do you know what a us 90 is not a lot of people do exactly and that's where it all started you know, do you know what year it started? I honestly do not. Probably in like the 1970s. 1969. Wow. Yep. Episode three, ATV Talk. Danny Duncan tells you all about it because he was the guy from Valley Motorcycle Sales that went to the Honda dealer show where they had the, the US 90s in Southern California. And they traveled all over the country 
but still, you know, the epicenter of the industry started here in Southern California. I mean, we're in Lakeside right now, but I could throw a rock and hit El Cajon and Santee. So you have it's a little thing called East County and um, you, you have Brock Glover, Ricky Johnson, and I could go on of all the people that came from the Southern California area for racing ATVs. Marty Hart, you know, Triple E um, was here. Uh, Mike Coe, Sam Coe. I mean, there's just so many, so many people. We, the Duncans came from, from El Cajon, you know, area, Santee, Lakeside area. So uh, this week or tomorrow, um, Julian Hofert will be on. And his uncle, Ace Williams, was one of the developers of different machines that, that were growing the hybrids, the first hybrids. Oh, wow. You know, making three wheelers way back. And this is early 70s um, when the, all this was happening. Um, you know, I remember going to the to the Speedway 117 uh, here in uh, what, what we call Otai now. And the very first like three wheeler races before there was Team Honda. Yeah, that's, I'm old. It's OK. You don't have to you don't have to laugh too hard, but. I know I'm probably old enough to be your grandfather. I actually know. Probably yeah. not. Probably not. I have a grandson that's 50 years old. No. How how old are you? How old do you think I am? Early early 50s, 57, maybe at the most. You're 57? 57? Yeah. You're only a few years ahead of my dad, actually. Well. That doesn't mean I'm not old enough. I mean, I have a 15 year old grandson. <laughs> so, and my youngest, my youngest is 25. So they're, they're spread out quite a bit. <laughs> my oldest is 34, 35, 34, 34. Yeah, I think she, I think she, yeah. I think it's 34. I'll have to call up to do the math because I don't remember. But that's neither here nor there. I, I really love your story and the your enthusiasm. I, I haven't met that many young people. Let me put it to you this way. Most of the young men your age are tongue-tied. I used they to all, be. They, they're so tongue-tied. When you get off the when you get off with this with me, you need to call Adam McGill up and tell him from me that I said thank you so much because your professionalism and just the fact that you are able to bring across your ideas and your conversation clearly is perfect because you'll go you'll go far with just that because so many racers lose because they won't talk yeah i i was not always like this i was very shy and i i, I didn't want to talk to people i didn't know how to talk to people i had a stutter it was very hard and then adam's like if you want to make this your living you need to talk you need to open up you need to be open you need to be honest and he goes you need to play the pretty girl and talk Use it because it will take you, it will take you far. I mean, I don't know Tracy's history when she was younger. Uh, she's an attractive lady. And it, if she speaks as clear as she does now, doors opened because of that. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it's not, it, it, you know, it, I don't think it's sexist. I think that it's, it's almost to the point where you're going to laugh at this. Men are um, scared of strong, attractive women. You, you threaten us because we don't know how to take it. Uh, oh, she's knowledgeable. She's intelligent. She knows what she's talking about. She knows what she wants. She knows what she needs. And she's also attractive. Uh, 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 I don't know how to handle that. You know? I, get, I get that. Uh, me being... I guess me and coming to all the locals around here, not very many guys talk to me. If, they, if I don't approach them, they don't talk to me because they're very shy and backwards where 
you get people like Adam that's just he don't care and, but now it's just so many people don't know how to approach and start and hold a conversation that it's just awkward sometimes do you have your phone in your hand at, at the races sometimes uh it depends where i am i if it's not in my hand it's either in the trailer or in my pocket but what i'm saying is you're not walking around with your face down with your phone so many people nowadays they walk around with their phone and you need to walk around with your face up looking at all the people and um i i'm not afraid to talk to anybody you know if if i was on my phone all the time i would i wouldn't see all of these little kids that would want to I see kids all the time that I just walk up to them and say hi and it just makes their day. There's a little there I sent you photos from the weekend and weeks prior of me and these kids together. Kids look forward to talking to pros. As of yesterday, there was a little girl who come up and talk to me and she talked to me forever and I introduced her to Jess and she was so happy and so excited to meet another pro. There was 10 to 14 maybe more pros yesterday at this team race and there were so many kids that were so happy just to be able to go up and talk to them and be like oh i talked to a pro today that's amazing well they see you on social media and you're bigger than life so back before this was all the deal when i was doug eichner's mechanic i don't know if you know who that is but he would be in the box van getting ready and a kid would show up. I'd make him get out of the box van and come and take the photo, come and have the conversation. And it got to the point where he knew when he saw the kids, he would automatically because the children build the future of the racing. And if you snub a child when they're young, they will be your fiercest competitor when you're older and they will not like you at the end of your career when you might need a break from that young person, that young person's not going to give it to you because you snubbed them when they were a child. Yeah. On a, the kids are the future of the sport. Um, I'm at every, I go to the micro starts at 8 a.m. And I go to the youth starts at 930. And I talk to not only every girl and young lady out there on the line because they're doing it just to become like me, a woman's pro to every man and young young man out there trying to make it to adam mcgill's position and that's that's so endearing to a sponsor because if you're wearing your race gear and you have your your sponsors on there you're endearing that sponsor to those people also and that's a huge plus for you and a selling feature that most people don't even understand, don't even have a clue how important that is. You know, your professionalism, as soon as we started talking, it was, wow, this is awesome because you were energetic, you're clear, you're you're smiling and laughing, but I'm but I'm so I'm so serious because I've talked to seasoned pros that have trouble forming a sentence. <laughs> you laugh, but it's true. I get I mean, it. I, I don't want to have to carry the conversation. I want to ask a question, turn it over to you. Run with it. Yay. <laughs> you laugh, but it's true. Uh, <laughs> you know, you, you're doing amazing. Uh, you know, I want to I want to tell you you're welcome on ATV Talk at any time. Thank you. You can tell Adam McGill and any of the people that are affiliated. They're more than welcome to hit me up. And um Free promotion is free promotion. And I think you're understanding where that goes. If you're on here now, if your hair was flopped over your shoulder and you could read what's on your shirt, that would be even it, better. It's actually one go. of my shirts. There you go. Hey, let's promote Chloe, right? Yes. Uh, and it's actually my new logo. We, my mom, my mom just got this done for me, actually. Uh, it has my name and my number on the back and all of my sponsors. And they can reach, they can get those from you where? 
Uh, they can contact me on Instagram. It's 923 underscore sweet pea, or they can uh, private message me on Facebook. It's just Chloe Harper. And you should see uh, my photo taken by Ken Hill um, and just contact me and we can get your name, your size, and it can be mailed, shipped, and even taken to New East Coast, some mountain states, fast tracks, and GNCCs. See, there you go. You just promoted yourself. And every time you promoted you, every time those people see you, your sponsors are dinged in that. And uh, young lady, that's that puts you miles and miles in front of everyone else that's out there. And uh, keep up the good work. And I'm serious. You need to get Adam on the phone. <laughs> Not only does he need to come on the show, but... Please thank him for your professionalism. Yeah, thank I definitely your parents for your professionalism and the, the for the love of the sport. Uh, it, it's it's incredible for a 19 year old young lady or a 19 year old person to be well spoken, clear headed, and you're beyond intelligent. I can already tell. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It's taken lots and lots of hard work to be here so uh let me break some bad news to you now okay work just got started doesn't get any easier and the moment you the moment you take a respite someone will pass you yesterday at, and i'm saying this open-heartedly because i'm so excited i'm so happy i raced one of my teammates for the team races today her name is avery collins she is the only girl in WX, well, not, well, YXC2 on a 150 at GNCCs. And she's won multiple races. And when she comes up, she's going to get everybody a run for their money because she's fast and she's quick and she's a good learner. And I, I feel like me and her are a lot of like, well, one, we ride with Adam a lot. We, we train with Adam and she's going to make an impact. And she's going to show people she's, I feel like me and her are going to do a lot of things alike and do things together because I can't wait to see her move off the 150 onto a 250 hybrid to a 450 to women's amateur to WXC. She's going to make a lot of progression, a lot of progression. And she's going to do amazing too. That's incredible. Is she getting the same tutelage as far as, um the verbal portion the sponsor portion all of those things as well oh i believe so uh she's getting help with that by adam like i am and i was and i still get help by adam till this day and she she can speak she speaks very very good uh well as i do as she was she can hold a conversation. If you walked up to her and talked to her, she can talk to you. She is very, very open. And she, she speaks like me and Adam. Like Adam. Huh? Yes. <laughs> I would never do that because I don't say it right either, but it was just funny that uh, it was just, it was just a joke, but um, <laughs> that's outstanding. Uh, how much time do you get to spend out in the garage with your dad working on your machines? Um, honestly, I spend time out in the garage. My mom's business is out in the garage. I work a lot for my mom. Um, we, I work to do graphics with her and she's swamped all the time. She needs as much help as she can get. So I'm out in the garage and when my dad needs help, I help him. But I work with my mom most of the time. Usually when my dad says, hey, can I have your help? I go back and I help him. And yeah, I try to help both of my parents as much as I can. You know, it's a testament to what a great job they did raising you. And I'm sure that Adam had some instruction in that as far as, you know, making you understand that the, the two biggest sponsors and fans you'll ever have are your parents and making sure that they're taken care of to make your dreams come true is first and foremost. Yeah, yeah, definitely. My mom and my dad has paid for my racing and supported me 
for 15 years. They have not only put me on a four-wheeler, but they have put my older brother on a four-wheeler too. And they have been able to do amazing at it and show us and teach us things that I would I would have not thought I would never know. So they have done amazing because I wouldn't be where I am today without my mom and my dad. They have, they've been amazing. So they've pushed me to do better for me, not for anybody else, but just for me to want to be something for myself, not to prove a point or to show that I can do it just as well as the next person. They showed me that make myself happy first before I go out and I try to make anybody else happy in the world. Believe in yourself, young lady. Be strong, be proud, believe in yourself. N- never let anybody else tell you how it's going to be. You know, it's great to have a partner in in your racing in life, but don't let people tell you how it's going to be. You make the impact. You do the job and uh, you tell them that you're going to be a champion. Definitely. Uh, I know people that, I I have I live in a I live in a tiny town where everybody knows everybody, and there there is been I think one not maybe not even one professional athlete come out of this county, and for me to be able to say, hey I am a professional athlete, and hey I do make this a job for me, and to me that's a big deal. I might not be around all the time I travel from state to state doing said job but I'm making my dream happen my dream since I was three I've been able to I feel like successfully make my dream a reality it's not it's not a dream anymore I'm living it exactly now the you know the dream is to win a championship then the next dream is to win another championship and then the next dream and then the next and then the next are our goals or however people want to put it down on paper for however they want to put it down. I, I want to, I just want to be able to, yes, I want to win a champion, but I want to make racing as fun for me for as long as possible. If you're not having fun to me, if I'm not having fun, I'm not doing great. Winning is awesome, but I just want to have fun. Honestly, I I want to go out and say, yeah, I had fun and I gave it my all. And I have one win this year so far. I I won Mason Dixon. And uh, to me, that was amazing. I was never so happy to just be able to win because it's rookies really don't win until maybe their second year or their third year. It just depends. And to me, it showed not only me, but everybody else out there, how much work I have put in. And it was only eight rounds. That's all it was. And to me, I just, yeah, I just try really, really hard to put as much work in and effort in as I can. Cause you never know when your, your last race will be your last race. And to me, I always want to end on a good note. I never want to say oh, I should have done this. And I regret that I'm going to give it all out on the track and have fun with it as much as I can. Exactly. I totally agree with everything that you just said. (laughs) On that note, young lady, uh, you're always welcome on ATV Talk. Uh, I really appreciate your time. And again, thank you so much. Um, Is there anything you'd like to shout out in closing? Uh, I definitely want to say thank you to uh, my sponsors because I would not be where I am today without them. They have not only supported me, but pushed me into be able to being where I am today. I want to thank like God for always protecting me, my mom and my dad, Pro Graphics, of course, uh, Lone Star and Custom Action Shocks and Micahs. Uh, Max's tires for picking me up and being so supportive of me this year. Uh Musali and Riding Gear for always making sure I look great. Parts Unlimited, Treadways Honda at a for making my Honda's parts come in easier. Um, Osborne Off Road definitely for all the help with my Yamaha and Pierce Performance for working on my Yamaha and putting it out there, being able for me to be ready to race every weekend. 
Uh, I want to thank Works Connection, ODI Grips, Quatex for the amazing seat covers, uh, Henson, Fast Company, Sunstar, IMS Products, Liat. I want to thank Haley and uh, HC Conditioning for always keeping me in uh, shape for the year. I want to thank Lifestyle Gym and my other trainer, Lakin. She has helped me also stay in shape and just be a better me all around. And yeah, I want to thank my race family and all my friends that have supported me so far. And uh, yeah, so thank you for having me on. Honestly, it means the world. The team here at ATV Talk would love your feedback. Please email us at hello at ATVTalkPodcast.com. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, don't forget to share us with your family and friends. The podcast is available on all streaming platforms, and you can find us on social media as ATV Talk Podcast. We're on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, Rumble and Twitter.